Proverbs 27 from the authorized version of Scripture. Go ahead. Get your authorized version of the Scriptures. Read along with me today at the Scriptures we're going to be looking at. Read along with me because guess what? Guess what? Proverbs 27. Six, well, five and six. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Thank you, dear brother. You, whenever you wake up, you'll see. Uh, thank you for your correction. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Uh, made a uh, mistake in um, what are you going to do? Uh, my mouth was going quicker than my brain, and I made a mistake. Um, brother, I, I had to unpin your one beautiful comment because a small mistake was made. Um, it, it was, you know, <laughs> God that said, thou shalt surely die. Um, I checked the comment section. I pinned the thing, and I acknowledged it. Thank you, my dear, beloved, lovely brother who notices a gnat on the rear end of a fly. Bless your heart and soul and not in the southern context. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. I did check myself, brother. Thank you. <laughs> While we're in Proverbs 27, get, get the authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Will these things be so? Because guess what? Come here. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I mean, and I, you know what? I'm not even trying to pass off to you that I'm this perfectly sanctified individual either. I'm just a man. I, I'm not one who's up on a high horse. You know, like certain King James Bible-believing Christians and several other of these ridiculous Christian preachers out there who uh, like to, you know, put themselves up here. I'm, I'm not like, dude, come on. I'm fallible. The authorized version of the scriptures is infallible. While we're in Proverbs, I bet one second, please. All right, excuse me. While we're in Proverbs 27, chapter 27 of Proverbs. Oh, uh, let me see. 20 on the verse 24. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. Yeah, because when you think you are your own God and your own standard, hey, when, when is it enough? Huh? As the finding pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. <laughs> and uh, very interesting, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth, let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. The stranger, and not thine own lips. I think a lot of the, especially these Christians, I need to remember that. <laughs> See this? Okay. Uh, Though thou shouldest bray a fool who says in his heart there is no God, and a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness behaving as if he says in his heart there is no God, depart from him. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. That's something that I falter on. You know, when you think you're going to die, <laughs> that's a reason. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. I, no, no. I, I, I falter at that when I need to be out contacting the brethren hey brother or send a, at least a simple text I, I i falter at that and forgive me brethren forgive me brethren for not being diligent to know the state of the flocks okay of the brethren you know please forgive me no excuses okay for riches are not forever and doth the crown endure to every generation very interesting, I think, for us to touch on to begin because we're going to be addressing a question. Questions. I had some really good questions this week. I get questions all the time. You, you free gracers, 
you hate scripture. You really do. But I get questions quite a bit, uh, but very few questions come from those who, number one, are saints, and number two, more importantly, want to know truth. Very, those are few and far between. All of these kinds of questions trying to trip me up or just asking questions to cause strife and debate and, you know, get a lot of them. But, you know, whatever. Questions, though. Questions. This question, um, and I'm going to read the text message that the dear brother sent. Um, I made mention of this question on Wednesday. And today we're going to address this. Now, work brother, we are going to go around the block to go across the street for a reason. As I told you, and as our other brother, our dear sweetheart brother knows as well, uh, when questions such as what you have asked and other brethren have asked uh, that are there, they are a benefit for the body of Christ. Okay? So, so you are aware of that. But here's the question. Here's the question. All right. Good morning, Brad. Something interesting came to mind about Adam and Eve. Do you think that Satan took the time to watch and to study them? That I do believe, but to watch and to study them to figure out that Eve was the weaker one. Or did he just automatically know she was? I, as I said in Wednesday's video, I, I think Satan knew what was what. I, I, I have no doubt about that. Um, I don't think Satan needed to study them to figure out which was which. I do not, and, we, and we're going to look at this today. We're going to examine that question, okay? But uh, I think he knew. I, I think everyone knew. Uh, you know, everyone, the angels and what's not like that. I think, um, yeah, I think he knew which one was which. I think he, by, you know, bided his time to hit at the opportune moment. That I do, that I do think. I think that Satan did study them, just like, okay, learning their patterns, like the devils do to us today. They observe us, they mark our steps, they watch us, they observe us, saints, and not those of us that belong to a little cultic clique, okay? But they watch us, saints. Our mannerisms, how we do things. I mean, you can see that with that idiot who, uh, um, uh, what's it, um, mimics almost perfectly the guy from Maine. You see that happening a lot. Emulating these people who emulate. That's what these devils do. They have, they stand back and watch how we interact, how we behave. Yes, but Satan knew what was what. I, I totally believe that. But see, here's where this question, and thank you, brother. Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Here's where this plays in. This is what this plays into. Satan wants you to believe he is God. Okay? And one of the, the most effective way that Satan has done that was, number one, yea, hath God said, as in Genesis chapter 3, well, the Greek says, which one? The Hebrew says, Ditto! Okay? Ye shall be as gods. God is the only one who truly knows what is good and what is evil. Okay? All right? Satan wants to be God. And Satan, through his creation, Roman Catholicism, their very first doctrine that the Roman Catholic Church incepted one God and three persons. Okay? And Satan wants you to believe that he's omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. Like our God, our Father, Jesus Christ is. Okay? All right? But however... Satan cannot be in the same place at two, or in two different places at the same time. I have the Father dwelling in me. Every single one of you saints have the Father dwelling in you. 
Satan can't do that. But Satan wants you to believe that he can. And how does he do that? How does he trick you to think that he can do that? One God and three persons. Okay? And incidentally, okay, uh, 10 minutes in, incidentally, if you're a Trinitarian, you're an anti-Christ. I believe in Je you believe in a lesser person of a three person God. That's heresy. That's satanic. That's vile. That's grotesque. That's vomitous. Dung ridden. And we could go on all day about that. Okay. Here you. There's your Trinity. Okay. To hell with the Trinity. I got no fear of false gods, nor do I give them respect. The Trinity is satanic. But Satan himself can't be in two places at the same time. So how does he circumvent this? Oh, he's got a whole bunch of devils going around who can be uh, in lots of places, but he himself, he can't. So how does he get around that? One God in three persons. But see, Jesus, God our Father, you're saved, you're a saint, you have the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? If you're a Trinitarian, you have the wrong God. And if you have the wrong God, people, okay, the, that video will be in the description box for you. If you have the wrong God, how can you possibly have the right salvation? Trying to figure that one out. But Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to use this uh, moment, dear brother, brethren, sisters, to of course smack the satanic, disgusting, vomitous, vile, repugnant Trinity once again. Because the Trinity is not God. The Trinity is of Satan. Okay? We got, uh, the, actually, um, well, I, I might put the whole playlist about Jesus as God the Father. But, um, yeah, we, we talked about this at length, and we're going to go through it again. And also, too, brethren, you got to remember, Rome at her beginning of the Roman Catholic Church, one God in three persons. That's how they began. You can fact check that yourself. Don't believe anything I say about that. Look for yourself, okay? Now, Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to run through this, and um, there will be links for you in the uh, description box for you to go further with this. We're just going to touch on it. Okay? In the beginning, Genesis 1, and, verses 1 on to verse 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. <laughs> the gap theory idiots. And I'm being very polite. The gap theory. Uh, this is where between Genesis 1 and 2 where they come up with this ridiculous gap theory that there's a gap of time. And within that gap there are millions and billions of years. And within that gap you have death before before uh, you know death and sin before the Garden of Eden here. Okay? Alright? So, there's so many problems with the gap theory. we got a video on the gap theory for you to uh, consider. Okay? But the gap theory is heretical heresy. The earth is not millions and billions and trillions of years old. Okay? I, I think it's like by now 7,000 years old. It's not that old. Okay? All right? Gap theory is stupid. Okay? We, Todd, did. Okay? Slow. Stupid. Anyway. And the capitalist Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So we see God. In the beginning, God. We see Spirit of God, capital S. Father, Spirit. And God said, God said, speak, word, let there be light. And there was light. So, what is this? Now, 
show me here three persons. It's not there. This is the Godhead. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. And unlike God, the components here of God, what he is comprised of, can separate. Okay? They are not individual persons. Okay? Besides, a bird isn't a person anyway, you idiot. Okay? I'm being polite. Okay? I really am. <laughs> All right? So this is not in context to persons whatsoever. Okay? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Just one verse. Just one verse. Okay? John chapter 1. Verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word, capital W, one of seven times that it appears in your NIV or your New American Standard or your LSD version, uh, it only appears six times because they, they don't like the Johannian comma, they call it, First John 5, 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, Spirit, Soul, and Body. Very simple, okay? And the Word, capital W, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, God said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And these devils will have this read, and the flesh became the word. See, this is a problem that a lot of you devils have. You're not saved, but here's one thing. You've got to remember, people, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. Get that through your head. It, it, it would be so much better for you if you could at least Get that. Please. Understand that. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. And that there, dear friend is what everything that is contrary to our Father Jesus Christ and to the truth of his word, the perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. That is the premise of everything that is anti-Christ. To replace and to be against. You shall be as God. And what replaces it? Your sagging skin suit. Flesh doesn't become God. Okay? <laughs> you gotta get that through your head. Okay? It will, it, 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 okay? If you can start with that, start with that, you'd be doing a lot better than any Christian. Okay? You really would. You really would. Okay? And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And we'll touch on that here in a little bit. Psalm 90. See, brother, this is what I meant. We're going around the block to go across the street because, see, with your question, we can tie in all these other things that will be a benefit onto the body of Christ. Okay? Remember, I, hey, see this, see this? Okay? Remember, this isn't about us. It's also about those who just willy-nilly happen upon this and some that never have heard this. Okay? We got to think of others. Okay? Not just ourselves. Okay? I, I don't, I'm not, I love you. I'm not saying that's what you were doing. I'm explaining to you how this thing works, okay? And one brother said, Brad, you know, I know. I know. Psalm 90, verses 1 on to verse 2. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth. Okay? Uh, Genesis, verses 1, 2, and 3. Okay, the earth was without form and void. Okay, 
without form. There was something there, but it was without form, okay? So, before the mountains were brought forth, remember mountain, okay? Mountains. That's going to play a part in what we're talking about. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world without form, remember? Without form. There was something there, but it was without form. Okay? Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. The beloved Proverbs 8. Verses 23 and 31. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled. Mountains were settled. Okay? Before the hills was I brought forth. Well, as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. Highest part of the dust of the world. You can make an argument, that's us. You could make that argument. Okay? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, I was like, okay, let's go with that. But we're not going on with that in this. Okay? When he prepared the heavens, the sky, space. I know some of you don't like that, but come on. Okay? Or firmament. How's that? Okay, we got the sky that you and I see. We got the firmament, firmament that's beyond our atmosphere. You have the third heaven where God is. Okay, all right, all right. When He prepared the heavens, I was there. When He set a compass upon the face of the depth, when He established the clouds above, when He strengthened the fountains of the deep, and the fountains of the deep are what broke open for the flood. Remember, okay. When he gave to the sea his decree. Man, like, okay, he made everything. It's like, okay, the sea's not going to go beyond the boundary of the cute little beaches of ours, okay? Or back then, okay? And it is that way today. That the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him, as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. God saw what he had made was good. God said, the word became flesh. Okay? This is simple stuff. Which Catholicism, Rome, with their ridiculous one God and three persons, has blurred and so many people have taken that act. Ah, Hook, line, and sinker. Not everybody, though. Uh, I mean, it's 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 good. It is that you got even Muslims and atheists. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out, dude. That there, there's something wrong. You're, you're right. The Trinity is ridiculous. It's stupid. Okay. You might be ignorant of who God really is. Okay. That's a different thing. We got a lot of stuff on that. Okay. And there are others who I'm not going to name. Who also can rightly, you know, tell you who God actually is. It's not a trinity. <laughs> God is not a trinity. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? We're not gods. Okay? God forbid. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay? But one God is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that blah, make one God. That dope it. Okay, let's continue. But, you know, God saw that everything he made was good. How did God make it? God said. Is that resonating now? The word made flesh? Okay, is that resonating? Good. Okay, I hope so. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. And what did I say we were going to read to? 31. Okay. John 17. John 17. Beautiful tie in here for you. John 17. The real Lord's Prayer is John 17. 
No, thou, our Father who art in it, that's not the Lord's prayer. He's giving a Hebraic Jewish prayer unto Hebraic Jews. That's not the Lord's prayer. That's another deception of Rome. The Our Father, who they call it, okay? The Sermon on the Mount, the, that will be in the description box for you as well. This is the real Lord's Prayer, okay? These words spake uh, on the verse 5. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Well, how can the Father be in heaven? But Watch the video, which will be the very first one at the description in the description box. Okay, that'll be number one. Okay, check that out. We go through that. Okay, that's not the main focus of this video. Check that out. Okay, God is a lot bigger than you give him credit for, Trinitarian. You like to put him into little things so you can control him. <laughs> God, yeah, wow. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. This is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before the world was. And God said, let there be light. And there, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis 1, verse 3. Okay? Revelation 3, 1 verse, verse 14. Verse 14. And um, Martin Richling, uh, the Canadian talk show host's teacher, and Elmer's teacher, um, <laughs> used this to say that Jesus Christ was a created being. <laughs> but see, the talk show host and Elmer, they have implemented his, Martin Richling's, uh, flavor of easy believism, which has caught on to many, many. I, I think even that jerk smack guy is uh, kind of in that vein, uh, shoe. But see, Martin Richling purposely, because he's a Jesuit, put out that erroneous thing that Jesus was a created being. Why? So that those who are his disciples can have a visual stimuli to separate the... Well, see, we're not like him, but yet they are. Yet they are. See, Richling did that as a ploy so that his disciples could distance themselves from him and yet carry on his heretical teachings. It's the thing about, it's similar to like how someone can go down on the Titanic being a Jesuit. Okay? They did, uh, Richling did that purposely so that his disciples can separate themselves, but yet his disciples teaching the, virtually the same thing. Because even, you know, I, mean, I mean, Jesus is a created being. You know, that's in line with uh, moronism and Jehoism and stuff like that, okay? But that was brazenly, um, you know, it's like, what? That, that's, that's crazy. He did that purposely so that them two guys specifically could distance themselves, but Richling did what he was ordered to do. And he, at least here online that I've noticed, he wasn't the creator of it uh, with his ridiculous establishment commandment, uh, warped, perverted form of dispensationalism, which is just insane. But see, the other two guys are the ones who carried the banner of what Richling started. Yeah, you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, you are. Okay? Anyway, Revelation, uh, hey, you're surprised I remembered that, aren't you? Revelation 3, verse 14. And on to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So see, he was the very first, he, Jesus was, you know, God created Jesus, and that, no, no, we've already looked at the verses, the word became flesh, God said, 
That's what that means. The beginning of the creation of God. And God said, let there be light. Okay? Jesus is not a created being. Jesus is God the Father. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul, which is greater. Okay? Our soul is greater. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? Because the Lord says, well, um, the Father is greater than, my, than I. Okay? So see, that's it. No. We're made in the image of God. Okay? Our spirit or soul will not be destroyed. This will eventually die. And remember, Jesus said, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, lowercase w, will not pass away. And he is the word of God. Okay? Capital W. All right? That's another trick that Trinitarians will use against you to, you know, to demote Jesus, who is God the Father. Okay? That's another trick. Be aware of that. Okay? Be aware of that. Just be aware. 1 Corinthians ver, uh, chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Remember, flesh did not, has not, nor ever will become God. God became flesh. Yes, he did. Okay, yes, he did. Flesh doesn't become God. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? 1 Corinthians 20 unto 25. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world, which is earthly, sensual, devilish? That's the wisdom of this world. It's the wisdom of man. Philosophy, the love of man's wisdom. Okay? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew, God, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And you can tie that in with Romans 10, 14. Okay? All right? The world calls this foolishness. And foolishness is behaving as if in your heart you say there is no God. And the world calls this foolishness. Hmm. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Look at this. Look at verse 24. But unto them which are called, called, not like Calvin, called, Jesus the cross. That is the called way. God chose the cross. He calls you the way of the cross. That's what that means. It's not the Calvinistic elect and non-elect nonsense. Okay? But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, look at this, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. Christ is the wisdom of God. And unto man he said, fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and depart from evil is understanding. We are to fear the Lord. Well, we're supposed to fear the Father. You know, how are you supposed to fear someone that you're in love with? <laughs> Let's not get started on that. But see, there the Trinitarian demotes the Father, Jesus Christ, again. Okay? There they do it again. Gee, uh, uh, Christ, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, the power of God. And the wisdom of God, the fear of the Lord. You're supposed to fear the Lord. You're, you're going to fear Jesus when you stand before him, you lost devil, at the great white throne of judgment. John fell at his feet. You know, John who rests his head on Christ's bosom, uh, fell at his feet as dead. Okay? Christ is the wisdom of God. But yet you got the stupid free gracer, you know, who's a Trinitarian in the first place, and they demote Jesus and you, and uh, they're the gods of lasciviousness. 
you know, te- uh, preach to you another gospel, another Jesus, and get on offer you peace with sin and freedom from God. Okay, verse twenty-five. Because the foolishness of God, and who calls what God does foolish? Lost people, a majority of Christians, okay? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Than man. And the weakness of God is stronger than man. Okay? All right, now Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, verses 1 on verse 3. Hebrews 7, verses 1 on verse 3. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, which means peace. Uh, I believe Salem is Greek for shalom. Peace, uh, king of Salem, king of peace, okay? The Hebraic word shalom, okay? But king of Salem, and not the cigarettes, Okay? King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem. What does that mean? Which is king of peace. Without lowercase f father, note that, without mother, oh, well, Mary is the mother of God. She was the vessel used in which Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus, fact check me. Where does Jesus call her Mary mother? Oh, uh, they say, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Does he say, mother, behold thy son? Let's find that out. One second. Uh, John uh, 19, verse 26 on to 27. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, okay, that's what the scripture says, what saith the Lord? And the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Show me where Jesus, you know the red words, where does Jesus call Mary his mother? Show it to me. Show it to me, please. I I think I've missed that. It says right there, yet. Did Jesus himself call Mary his mother? Catholic? <laughs> oh, we got a we got a really good video for you, uh, Mary worshippers. Uh, you know, you Roman Catholics about your mother Mary. You know, Rome. Okay, which will be in the description box for you. Then said he to the disciple, "Behold, thy mother." That's the closest you're going to get. And Jesus was not saying, "Behold, thy mother." Okay. And from that hour, that disciple took her on to his own home. Okay? So, without father, Joseph was not the father of Jesus. You know, uh, the Hebraic Jews, uh, uh, Yeshua ben Yosef. No, Joseph was not the father of Jesus. Unless you read a Bible, okay? Without mother, without descent, Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Of course, the Hebraic Jews took the stones and going to kill him because why? Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. Just called himself the Father that moment. Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He didn't have to. All he said was, I am. He called himself the Father. Okay? Okay? That's why the Hebraic Jews wanted to kill him. 
Okay? I am. That's what an eternal being can claim. Jesus Christ is. Is. Come in the flesh. Okay? Is. Different. Is. Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Just one, one verse. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of the Old Testament is God of the New Testament. Okay? God's grace is in every dispensation. How God deals with man is what changes. Okay? And, and, and Malachi, 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 <laughs> Malachi, just one verse, Malachi 3, 6, come on, Malachi 3, verse 6, not Malachi, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, God doesn't change. God's grace is in every dispensation. Amen? Yes, it is. What changes is how God deals with man. God himself does not change. Okay? All right? But see, now, this thing about Christ, how the Trinitarian demotes Christ, they, they go to a thing in Mark chapter th uh, 13. They go to a thing in Mark chapter 13. Okay? And see, Satan is not omniscient, omnipresent, or omnipotent. He can't be in two places at once. Like our Father, Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. You have the Father dwelling within you, saint, if you're saved, okay? Satan can't be in two places at once. How does he circumvent that? One God in three persons. That's how. Okay? But see, you got guys out there like Eric Lionheart, Lionheart, a uh, senile old fart, um, who says, well, Jesus, you know, didn't even know. And this is something that Trinitarians will do. And in doing this, they demote God. In doing this, they say that the, the, it's the Trinitarian Catholic doctrine. Well, the, the disgusting uh, image of the female matrix that they use to tell you that's what God is. You know that weird diagram, that, that, the, um, the, the perverse nature of the Trinity, okay, which will be in the, uh, the description box for you, okay? That is the image of the matrix, and not that stupid movie. The Matrix, the female Matrix, the eggs, the ovaries, and stuff like that. Uh, and we got the video here on the channel proving that's, a, that's what you guys, Trinity guys, are worshiping. Okay? It's, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. But see, guys will do, well, Jesus didn't know the day and the hour. So, he's a lesser God out of your one God made of three persons. Dude. If you're a Trinitarian, you have the wrong God, okay? You are in here, I'll use your language, essence. You're worshiping Satan. Dude, dude, the time is short, okay? My health is getting worse. I ain't got time to play around, okay? You're a Trinitarian, you're worshiping Satan. Now, you might not know that you might be ignorant about but that's what Christians have always believed. Oh nay nay. Oh wait, 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 wait. let me rephrase that. Oh yeah, you Christians have, sure. Saints up uh, oh nay nay. Oh nay nay. Okay. You're a Trinitarian, you're a Satan worshiper. I ain't got time to play around with you. Okay? You're a worshiper of the Trinity. One God in three persons. You're worshiping Satan. Period. You got the wrong God. Okay. I hope you. I hope you. We got videos here on the channel. Go ahead and watch them. Okay. 
You got the wrong guy, Trinitarian. But see, guys like Eric Lionheart and, uh, and others that follow him, and remember that Deb did. Okay, <laughs> here. I'll, I'll, I'll put the, I'll put the, you know, lying fart. I'll put the two videos that the Lord had me to do rebuking that senile nitwit. He, he's a Catholic. He tells you that uh, Rome, uh, America is Mystery Babylon. For those playing the home game, there are those out there, babes, novices, who could ignorantly say, well, America's ignorant. No, a uh, saint comes along and says, dude, come here. <laughs> let's, hey, let's, let's talk, okay? Uh, Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon. Rome is Babylon. Dude, okay? Rome is Babylon. Okay? Period. Anybody like Eric Lionheart, Stephen Anderson, Kent Helvin, just to name a few, there are many others out there who tell you that America's Babylon, they're working for the Vatican. They're working for Rome. Henry Morris. Henry Morris, in his bullet knife proof um, Bible that he did with the study notes, he, in the study notes for Revelation chapter 14, got a, a video, which I won't put in there. You can find this out yourself. Um, Henry Morris also deflected attention away from Rome with Revelation chapter 17. Okay? That's a, that's a Catholic coadjutor. That is a coadjutor. Anyone, that, that's a telltale thing. And devils are aware that some of us saints make people aware of that. So they, they kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. even, even Jesuits in the one book uh, about, uh, from well, whatever his name was, uh, even Jesuits acknowledge it. It's like, yeah, that's talking about us. You know, Rome. Okay? Rome is Mystery Babylon. You got someone coming around saying that it's America. They're Catholic working for the Vatican. Period. Not counting the novice who, you know, a saint could be like that. Dude, come here. Okay? But these Trinitarian guys like to go to Mark 13. Mark 13, 32 and verse 37. Okay? Now, look at this carefully. And what? And in the description box will be the video Day and the Hour, which will be number two right under the wrong God for you to consider, where we're addressing that, that putz Eric Lyon fart. Okay? <laughs> All right? Okay? Um, he's like, well, Jesus doesn't know the day and the hour. Okay? Trinitarian. Demoting God. Jesus is the lesser God of the one God and brr, three. That's heresy. But here's what they do. But of that, uh, Mark 13, verses 32 on to 37. Now let's look at this carefully. Jesus is saying, man, flesh, is unable to know. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh doesn't become God, remember? But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not even the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. But Jesus is the Father. But he, what is he talking about? He's saying for flesh, it is impossible. Angels, such as, you know, uh, Satan, who is, you know, is a sheriff, and we're going to touch on that, but uh, he, does, he transforms himself into an angel of light. Like these crazy Pentecostals. Well, I've seen God. No, you haven't. You've seen something. I'm not denying that with some of you uh, twisted Pentecostals. I've seen it. No, you haven't. You've seen something. You've seen an angel of light. Satan, maybe. Okay? Remember, Satan can't be in two places at the same time. But they come to this and say, well, see, son, you know, Trinitarian, demoting God. But what was first mentioned before any of that? Man. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God the Father in the flesh of man. God manifest in the flesh. God the Father went to the bathroom. God the Father sweat. As far as we know, God the, other, God the Father might have had B.O. Okay? I, okay, listen to me. 
Listen, okay? This sagging sin suit that was made of dirt is what God was manifest in. Okay? This cannot know, this cannot know the day or the hour. Okay? But let's continue. Take ye heed, watch and pray, that ye know not where, for ye know not when the time is. Who is Jesus addressing? Flesh. Man. Okay? Like I said, we get into this in the, um, the day and the hour video. Okay? We get really in-depth in this in the day and the hour video. Okay? For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh or even at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Son of man, son of man. Okay, we like I said, we cover this in depth in the day and the hour video. Okay, but son of man, Galatians four. Okay, Galatians four, uh, verses one and verse six. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. That is a lowercase w, a uh, lowercase l there. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Okay? Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. This is, uh, this is really simple, but anyway. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Okay? The word made flesh. Okay. You can also reference, and we're not going to do this in this video, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5, which these guys who worship flesh, Christians, Satanists, these devils, they really, they really, they hate this. They, they hate this. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> uh, just type in Accountable KJV and look at that little young idiot from Canada. The videos are still up there. Okay. <laughs> but they, they hate that, that truth that flesh is sinful even the flesh that Jesus Christ is come into okay they hate that they hate that but remember Jesus Christ kept the law perfectly therefore that sinful flesh was sanctified okay remember that remember that but let's continue to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons God has sent forth the capitalist spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Like I said, read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5, and you'll see. Okay? Uh, son of God! Son of God! Okay? Son of God! 1 John 5. 1 John 5, verses 18 on to 21. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. This is talking about born of, uh, being born again, which is talked about in 1 John 3, verse 9, where the sinless perfection idiots like to go and say, hey, you got to stop saying, no. You go the called way of the cross, death to self, taking responsibility for what you did, not hiding behind anyone else, having the hell scared out of you, you the lesser calling on the greater, God save me, the Lord saves you and seals you with himself. You have God the Father dwelling within you. God within you, which talks about which it talks about in 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, 
God within you cannot, will not lead you into sin or cannot sin. Okay, but we can, okay, because our spirit and soul are within this sagging sin suit. Okay, that's how that works. So right there, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But see, see there again, any of you who come across these sinless perfection idiots, okay, simply turn them to Romans chapter 7 and say, well, apparently Paul missed that. And watch, I bet you. Well, you know, Paul was a false apostle, a false prophet. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Catholic, anyone? Bye-bye. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul missed that. Paul missed that. That was before he was, no, that's all present tense. Okay? It's talking about who, 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 who dwells within you. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who never did sin, cannot, will not sin, or that spirit of Antichrist, which is exemplified in easy believism, Catholicism, Pentecostalism, Islam, uh, Shintoism, Tao, whatever ism I is man, okay? All right? We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. It's talking about God the Father who dwells within the saved believer, okay? But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, born again, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. I know I'm saved. Why? Because it got written down for me, number one, and he dwells within me. Okay? And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we and we are in him that is true even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. 1 Timothy 3.16 in that in that. In that lovely First Timothy three sixteen, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. These devils would have this read, and the flesh was manifested to be God. They would have see devils, Christians for the most part want this to be God. Flesh is not God. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Son of man. Son of God. Okay? That's, that's how this works. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the capital S spirit. Seen of angels. Preached on to the Gentiles. Believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? All right? And of course, son of David. That that that's the easiest one out, out of it. That that's this is all simple anyway. This is all simple anyway. But see, if you're a Trinitarian, you don't serve the true God, you serve Satan. And what about Satan? We're, we're gonna get to that. But Luke chapter one. Luke chapter 1, 31 under 33. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 under 33. And behold, oh, uh, let's, uh, uh, talking to, you know, the angel talking to Mary. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Jehovah saves. Okay? He shall be great. And shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Throne is David the father of Jesus. Jesus is in the lineage of David. What does that mean? Well, Isaiah chapter uh, Isaiah chapter 9 
verses 6 on 7. And unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Pay attention. And his name shall be called, capital W, Wonderful. Counselor, capital C. No, Holy Ghost. What is that spirit? Uh -huh. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Ooh, like kind of what we looked at in Hebrews 7. Melchizedek, you know, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What does that mean? What does that mean? Huh? Well, everlasting father, first and foremost, John 14, John 14, 6 and 9, 6 unto 9, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but, my, by, but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. <laughs> so simple. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Essence isn't in there. Jesus is the Father. And if you're a Trinitarian, you're serving Satan. And you demote Jesus as a lesser God. You have not the right God, dear Trinitarian. You don't believe that Jesus Christ is he, the Father. Scripture refers to Jesus as the Father because Jesus is the Father. And what does, again, Son of David mean? Oh, Revelation, okay, 19, all right. On the throne of David, what does that mean? Very simple. Uh, <laughs> and verse 16, And he hath on his vesture... And on his thigh a name written, it's not, <laughs> Jesus didn't have a tattoo. The article of clothing that was on his thigh had written, he didn't have a tattoo. Watch out for that one. King of kings and Lord of lords. And what is this guy's name? <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 where is that? Um, well, where is that? Uh, where he says in his name, uh, verse 13, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God. Seven times, seventh time, and every single time seven appearances of capital W Word is who? Jesus Christ. But see, Satan will have you to believe that he knows everything when Satan himself cannot be in two places at once. How does he get around that? One God in three persons. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Now we're going to get into some meaty stuff here. Okay? Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past 
unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he may, by whom also he made the capital, oh, excuse me, not capital, plural worlds. Now, <laughs> does that mean uh, they're here, that they're, <laughs> they're, um, they're uh, aliens on other planets? No. Like a uh, brother said in previous video, uh, there's barely any intelligent life on this planet, what, not alone outside there, okay? And I wrote that one down, so that one will be in the description box, okay? Worlds, plural. Oh, maybe planets? Okay. Who being and here and, and, and here the, the, the Trinitarians like this one. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Express image of his person. So see, the Trinitarian will come to this and say, see, God the Father is a person, God the Son is a person, the Holy Ghost is a person. What does this mean? Jesus, well, Colossians 2, Colossians 2, verse 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, like Catholics, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What does God the Father look like? Jesus Christ. That's what that means. A uh, precarnate form, uh, you know. Before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, you know, made of a woman, okay? Before that happened, in the Old Testament, God would appear in a bodily form. I bet you he looked like Jesus Christ. Okay, that, that's what that means, okay? If you have seen the look, we, 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 we already do. We already read John 14, okay? We already read it. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What does the Father look like? Jesus Christ. You know why? Because he is the Father. Okay? That's what Hebrews uh, 1.3 means. Not talking about one God and three persons. That's stupidity. No. What does the Father look like? Jesus Christ. Okay? So, think about this. And you, you, you chew on this one yourself. Okay? You see all these Roman Catholic depictions of what Jesus is supposed to look like? I'm telling you, that man of sin, the son of perdition, when he's on earth, you know, after we, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. All you Christians can get left behind, you'll see. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? Old Testament, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Before that happened, what did uh, God, the Father, what did God look like? Jesus Christ. They didn't know that because they weren't looking forward to the cross. Okay? Back then in the Old Testament. They weren't looking forward to the cross before it happened. Okay? That's what that means. Let's continue. Okay? Let's continue. Oh, and while we're at it, in Colossians chapter 2, uh, verses 13, oh wait, no, no, that, that's uh, later on. Excuse me. In Hebrews chapter uh, whatever here. Okay? Let's continue in Hebrews chapter 1. Being made so much better than the angels. Than the angels. Uh, who is it? Uh, the morons tell you that Jesus is an... Uh, no, no. Who, who is it? Who is it that says uh, Jesus is the archangel Michael? Uh, is that the j -Hos? I think it's the j -Hos. Okay? <laughs> Right there, okay? Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath inherited as as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, 
I will be a father. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Hmm. You know, Pentecostals who say, claim they've seen God, they're worshiping what? An angel of light. Not God. You haven't seen God. Pentecostal. Okay? Hey, you two kids. One from down under. One dear sweetheart. You have not seen God. You're a heretic. You're deluded in your brain. Okay? You've seen something. You have not seen God. You've seen an angel of light. Okay? Let's continue. And of the angels he saith. Oh, wait. Verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. The angels are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7. Now, hinge verse 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Remember this verse. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, Son David, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. There are things Jesus hates because he's God the Father. Okay? Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee, Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves the anointed one. That's what Christ means. Okay? God, even, uh, even thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth. God said, okay, God said, let there be light. The word became flesh. The glory I had with you at the beginning, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, the Word made flesh. Get it? Okay? <laughs> ah, and the Lord, and thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand, of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay, tie that one in there too. Okay? They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up an article of clothing, and they shall be changed. But Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever, God doesn't change. The way he deals with man changes. His grace is there in every dispensation. Okay? But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of, verse 13 and verse 14, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them, who shall be heirs of salvation? Also remember verse 14. The question now, would that go to Colossians 2? 18 on to verse 19. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. You Pentecostals out there that say, well, I've seen God. No, you haven't. What you think you're seeing is God is one that is transformed into an angel of light. You're seeing a devil. Maybe even Satan himself. Who knows? But remember, Satan can't be in two places at the same time unless one God and three persons. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Look at this. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Okay? And not holding the capital H head, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? from which all the body by joints and bands 
having nourishment ministered and knit together increase it with the increase of God. Join some bands and you can tie that in with Hebrews 4.12. Okay? All right? Ezekiel 28, but I, I want to I touch on this with you. When it comes to creation, okay, when were angels created? Now, I'm going to leave this on your lap because it could be a distraction. It's an interesting topic to uh, muse upon when were angels created? Because, because, because we have, and we just saw it in Hebrews chapter 1, we do have some scriptural evidence. We do, okay? We do have some scriptural evidence to support the idea that angels were created after man. Even though, and you read Genesis chapter 1, even though in the creation account, where do you see angels come in? You don't. You don't. Okay? Theory. They were there before, or they came after. And a place where you can go to maybe, to begin to be like, well, maybe, verse 7 in Hebrews 1. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers and his ministers, a distinction, a flame of fire. But when you go to verse 14, 13 and 14, you see, but uh, to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstools, are they not all ministering spirits? Who? The angels. Ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That is a very interesting topic. And you got to watch it with that. Why? Because if you focus... If you strain at a gnat and swallow the camel, you can focus in and make the thing of angels being the center point. Okay? You've got to be careful with that. That's a very interesting topic. Personally, personally, I believe the latter that the angels may have been there before mankind. Okay? That is my what I believe. But see, if you make that a big thing to do, you got to be careful with that because you can end worship. You can end up worshiping angels. And what do you say to defend yourself? So, well, I'm not on my hands and knees worshiping, doing kumbaya. Worship and uh, the heart of worship will be in the description box for you, okay? Actually, that will be number three, okay? <laughs> Third one uh, in the description box. See, for, for example, December 25th, <laughs> worship. Say, so, well, I'm not bowing down and worshiping it. Whatever takes the place in your heart as prime most, that's what you're worshiping. Worship is a lot more. The heart of worship will be in the description box for you, buddy, pal, okay? Whatever takes the place in your heart. No, no, you might not be going kumbaya to your little December 25th thing. That's a perfect example of it. And they defend themselves, well, I'm not worshiping it. What's in your heart about it? The heart of worship. It's the worship is an extension of the heart, what is primost in your heart. Ye shall be as gods. Get it? Idolatry is the extension of the true idol, yourself. Worship, the heart of worship comes from what? And you don't need to be on your hands and need to worship something. Huh? What, what 
what is in the mind, what comes from the heart, the heart of worship. So if you get sidetracked, and hey, like I said, that's a, and I'll, I'll let you chew on that for a while and uh, email me versus brother, uh, sister, go right ahead, okay? Um, uh, I personally believe the angels were around before mankind. I do. However, you can make a very good argument that, because we saw in Hebrews, ministering spirits. You can make that out of that, that, that's a good place to, so well, what about this, okay? But you see, you got to be careful with that, because if you make that the center point, you can be distracted, okay? God is not the author of confusion, okay? But now this thing about Satan, did he know Eve was the weaker vessel? Yes, he did. We have the account. Okay, and, and here's the thing about the when angels came into the picture. Let's say they were around before mankind. Let's just say that. I will make him a help meet. The angels were aware of it. Let's say the angels came after man as ministering spirits. Okay, let's say that. I will make him a help meet. Either way. Either way you slice it, the angels, the anointed cherub that covereth, was well aware that Eve was the weaker vessel. I personally think that because you don't have a time frame. Uh, there were some Hebraic Jews out there when it comes to Genesis that they gave like a number of years, like how many years it happened before Satan came along. I don't know where they got that from. But um, scripturally, you, you don't know. Okay. I personally believe that Satan knew from the get-go that Eve was the weaker vessel. Of course. Uh, a help meet. Okay. You, I mean, that God said. Okay. The angels knew that. The anointed cherub that covereth knew that. Okay. All right. Satan knew that. Obviously. Okay. Either way you slice it. Whether they came before or after. Either way, they're ministering spirits. Okay? All right? Remember, God is a spirit. Okay? You take out that A, how are you supposed to discern which is which? Well, you go to your Jesuit trained cemetery and in your little phallus house, right? Satan knew. I think he just waited for the opportune moment. Maybe when, maybe, hey, in Genesis 3, maybe that was the very first time that Adam and Eve were like, and then, they, and then Satan's like, aha, okay? All right, but Ezekiel 28, Ezekiel 28, verses 11 on to verse 19. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in the garden of God, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Time out. Now, do they know where the garden of Eden was? No. Do we today? No. No. Why? There... There's this little thing called a flood. Okay. Tyrus could not have been in the Garden of Eden. Couldn't have been. The flood happened, and everything that we see got rearranged. Okay. Remember I told you about the mountain thing? We'll get to that in a second. Okay. But the flood changed everything. The atmosphere changed. Everything changed. The landscape, the plates broke open and with like a like a bright red zit that you pop and it shoots for a mile away. The stuff, I know that's a little uh, whatever, but the stuff broke through the firmament and it hit like the moon. And there's stuff that came from Earth that's out there in space because of the pressure of the fountains of the deep breaking forth. Okay? 
That changed the landscape of everything. Thus, we today cannot categorically say that was Eden. Why? Because the whole earth was changed in makeup and structure because of the flood. So, I think there is no way in Hades that Ty Tyrus could have even known where Eden was. We today, I do not believe at all, can categorically say, well, that's where Eden was. I don't think so. Because the fountains of the deep broke up. Okay? Shot out into space. Things changed. Okay? All right? We're going to see, too. Before the flood, there were mountains. I have heard from several people who will debate, well, I don't think there were mountains before the flood. We got a verse of scripture that we're going to look at that shows that there were. For example, Mount Everest, Mount Fiji. Was that around before the flood? I don't think so. I personally don't think so. I think that came with the, you know, the, uh, the flood. But there are those out there, creationists, who say, well, I don't think there were any mountains before the flood. We're going to see a verse in scripture that categorically proves that there were mountains, mountains before the flood. I personally don't think Fiji, Everest, or um, um, the American one, um, St. Helens. I don't believe they were there before the flood. But there were mountains before the flood. Okay? There were. We'll, we'll look at that. All right? So, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Flood. Things changed. Tyrus could not, I do not believe at all, Tyrus could have even known where Eden was. Now, Noah could have known where Eden was, obviously. Could he have verbally have passed that whereabouts onto his descendants? That is a possibility. After the flood, we don't have much scriptural evidence to say that's where it is. Okay? That's all I'm saying. So, who is God addressing? Is he addressing uh, Tyrus? No. Who was controlling Tyrus? Who was the one behind standing at his right hand? Kind of like Peter. When the Lord said, uh, the Lord, you know, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. Uh, Matthew 16, 23. Okay? Same thing. Peter's like, Lord, this will never be. You know, about him going to the cross. If they knew about the cross before it happened, why did Peter say, Lord, this will never be? They didn't know about the cross before it happened. Okay? Same thing as with Peter. Okay? Same thing going on here. All right? So, God is addressing who? The anointed cherub that covereth. Let's continue. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, <laughs> that's what I believe, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Hmm. Thou hast been in Eden, garden of God. Revelation chapter 12 Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Revelation chapter 12. And again, brother, whether or not it was before man or after man, the decree that, you know, <laughs> you know, it is not good, you know, man was made in the image of God. Man was made in the image of God. Man was made in the image of God of God. They point to, well, let us make man in our image as meaning the angels. No. It's like, well, hey, you know, you heard me. We got videos on this channel. Okay? One referring to themselves in a plural sense is not, you know, 
give us a kiss or uh, we got to go do that. Speaking of, that's, then no, that's not Trinity. Trinity is satanic, okay? They'll point to that in Genesis. N no, okay? Man was made in the image of God, not an angel, okay? Angels are ministering spirits. Yes, they can take a bodily form, you know, like the guy uh, appeared, uh, Gabriel, uh, 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 appeared on to Mary and Joseph, okay? Yes, that happens, yes. But we already saw they're ministering spirits. God is a spirit. Okay, remember? Remember? Okay? So, man was made in the image of God. Man was made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. So, he had to have known, dude. He, does, I mean, knowing that, let us make man in his image, in our image. Meaning, you know, you know, speaking of, you know, of himself in the plural. We do, I've done that in this video. We got videos on this channel. I did it, speaking of myself, okay? That's how that works, okay? God, watch out for these wicked Trinitarians, okay? I, I ain't holding nothing back on that, by the way. I ain't got that much time left anyway, okay? So, I shall make a help meet for him. Dude, yeah, Satan knew. The, uh, the angels, the ministering spirits, even if it was before or after, they knew who was the weaker vessel. They knew. I think the observation thing that you brought up, brother, was Satan merely waiting for the time to strike. Because, like, look at our enemies. They observe us. They mark our steps. Said in the beginning of this video. Let's continue. Uh, Revelation 12, 9 and 10. And that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Hmm. Thou hast been in the Garden of Eden. Thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, You know God said? You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And also too, brother, yea, hath God said. Satan was aware of what God said. And God said, let us make man in our image. And it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help meet. Satan knew ahead of time. Satan knew ahead of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but back in Revelation 12, okay? That great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, what does Satan mean? Keep reading. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And see, the gap theory says that the fall of Satan happened within that thing. Uh, if that were the case, then that happens before the serpent was cursed in Genesis 3. And you have a whole lot of heresy. Okay? No. No gap theory. Gap theory is heresy. Because gap theory says that Satan fell within the millions and billions of years in that little thing between verses 1 and 2. And so you have a whole, kind, whole bunch of problems with uh, Genesis 3. Didn't happen that way. Gap theory is heresy. Okay? But, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, Satan, is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Now, if you are crazy and believe that the book of Revelation isn't chronological, which it is, oh, you can put this wherever you want. Can't you? <laughs> Like you said to me, brother, I have long believed about your second query. I have long believed, as you are now being made to uh, see. I've long believed that. Okay? All right? And, oh, 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 we're, we're not done. Uh, go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah, of course we've got to touch this. This is prime, this is, this is 
Not some bold stuff. <laughs> Satan is the one who gives you the Trinity. Okay? Satan through easy believism is the bridge. Well, you believe, just believe. Anyone can, Jesus was an actual person, spirit, soul, and body. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's documentable, provable that Jesus of Nazareth was a real person. It is provable, documentable, that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Those are historic facts. Most atheists won't even refute that. It's like, yeah, that's true. Was he God? That's a different story with them. But, okay, that's the bridge through easy believism, the Roman Catholic doctrine of uh, easy believism. Just believe and receive. Anybody can believe, okay? And how does Satan counteract the can't be in uh, two places at once? God in three persons, dude! That's how he does it. Isaiah 14, 12 out of 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? That's what Lucifer means. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Remember I told you about mountain? In the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Mm. And let me see what else do we got here. Uh, 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Like I said, um, I personally believe that the angels were around before man. Okay? Like I said, though, Hebrews 1 is a really good thing to suggest that maybe it wasn't that way. Uh, when Satan fell, um, you are cursed above all cattle, the serpent. Okay? That's when Satan was cursed. Okay? According to Scripture. All right? It wasn't between Genesis and Genesis 1, between 1 or 2. Then you have a big contradiction and you have a heresy. But... Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You see, transform three times in these verses. One in each verse. And no marvel, for Satan, the accuser of the brethren, brethren that old serpent, the dragon, that was Lucifer, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. These people who claim to have seen God, there you go, angel of light. Uh, Ezekiel 28. Every precious stone was thy covering, son of the morning. Oh, those glittering stones, man. Wow, ain't they bright? Bright, shiny stones, glittering with light. Okay. Therefore, it, okay, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You Pentecostal nitwits who say you see God, you've seen God. No, you haven't. You've seen an angel of light. And no marvel. And therefore, it is no great. Uh, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose then shall be according to their works. Just believe and receive, buddy. Okay? Now back to Ezekiel 28. Satan is a created being. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Cherubim, cherub, is a classification, I believe, of angels, even though they are not, uh, he's not called angel here. Okay? All right? But it says right here, Satan is what? The anointed cherub. He's, he's a cherub. He was not designated as angel. That is true. I believe that the cherub are in that classification thereof. But Satan is not called, besides what we looked at, transforms himself into an angel of light. See? 
Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Anointed. Antichrist. <clears throat> and I have sent thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. The mountain of God. Hmm. Now, Job 2, Job 1, we see uh, up and down, okay? Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Up and down, Job 1, just, uh, just one verse in Job 1, okay? Job 1, verse 7, The Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Satan can't be in two places at once. God in three persons and his devils, his little network of devils, okay? Job 2, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Okay? Now go back to Ezekiel, verse 15. So, Satan walked up and down. He was, God, Satan knows what God looks like. Okay? He was the anointed cherub that covereth. Okay? Now, God formed the earth, and then man, okay, man was made on the sixth day. So again, here is, this could be really good evidence to say that the angels came after man. Okay? But mountain of God. Mountain of God. Let's read verse four, uh, 15. Then we're going to touch on this. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. And what was his iniquity? Pride. We already looked at it. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. There you see it again. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Now, here's the point. Mountains. Mountain of God. Okay? Mountain of God appears three times. We looked at two of them. Okay? Mountain of God in uh, verse 14 and Mountain of God, verse 16. The thing comes up about when were mountains, like because I've, like I've said, there are some creationists out there who said, well, I don't believe that mountains were around until after the flood. I believe I already told you that Fiji, um, Everest, uh, oh, um, Helen, St. Helen, I believe those are post-flood things. So were there mountains before the flood? Because, hey, the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat, right? But Genesis 7, Genesis 7. Genesis 7. I, I'm sure, dear brother, this is not what you were expecting, but I'm not the boss around here. Genesis 7, verses 17 on to verse 21, uh, 22. Here you see another incident of the plural appearing before the singular. You see that a lot in Scripture. The plural usage of a word will appear before the singular usage of the word. You see that in scripture when you, you know, words are important. When you look these words up, okay? Here's another example of that. Genesis 7, verses 17 on to 22. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth and the high and the 
and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Okay, you see that? The high hills, high hills. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Hmm. Now, is this talking about because of the actual catastrophic nature of the flood that these mountains were there in the high hills? I don't believe so. I believe there were mountains present before the flood. And I believe that is a very good uh, reference to that. You can make the argument, it's like, well, you know, the fountains of the deep broke up and that's what happened, and yes, it did. They shaped the entire forms of the earth, form of the earth, but the high hills were covered and so were the mountains covered, meaning that there were mountains already present for the whole thing. And then remember how long the earth was covered with water. And the you know Grand Canyon was caused by a matter, matter of minutes uh, with the uh, because of the flood. Okay? All right? I believe that there were mountains and little hills before the flood. I do. I believe that some were added and maybe made more pronounced, pronounced after the flood. Okay? All right? What we are seeing here. All right, now, let's keep reading. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, and of and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and all that was in the land dry land died. Obviously fish and insects didn't. Okay, stuff like that. Okay? Now, go to Genesis 12. Now you see, this was during the flood. I believe that there were mountains and hills before the uh, flood. Okay? What we see now, remember, the, everything changed with the flood. Fountains of the deep broke open, yes. Well, now we have earthquakes. Uh, Grand Canyon was formed in a matter of minutes. That kind of stuff with, you know, the waters abated and stuff like that and whatnot. But, plural, mountains. That's the first appearance of mountains. Uh, a mountain in any form. Singular mountain. Genesis 12, verse 8. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, see thee that they will say, uh, Genesis 12, uh, verse 8, excuse me. Verse 8. Verse 8. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. There's the singular appearance of mountain. Okay? Exodus 3.1. Exodus 3.1. Now, Exodus 3.1 is right here, mountain of God. At, uh, Genesis 3, Satan was cursed. Okay? Cursed. Okay? Be creeping things. Okay? To eat dust. We're dust. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. So, was Satan, mountain of God, Horeb. Okay? As we saw in um, Ezekiel 28. Okay? Ezekiel 28, about mountain of God. How Satan was cast out, you know, of, of the mountain of God. How he had been on the mountain of God. Okay? Is that talking about Horeb? Or could mountain of God be a reference unto God being above his creation? I'll leave that to you to come up with. Okay? And you also see in Exodus 4, 27, mount of God. Exodus 4, 27. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him at the mount of God and kissed him. Exodus 18, 5. 
Exodus 18.5. Exodus 18.5. The evidence we're looking at, the evidence that we are looking at right now is strongly suggesting that angels may have come after man. Isn't it? Isn't it? Satan was cursed in the Garden of Eden. That you cannot deny. Okay? That you cannot deny. But the Mount of God. Okay? Mountain of God. Two times that we have seen in Ezekiel here and right there that we saw in Exodus 3. Okay? All right? But Exodus 18, 5. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife, unto Moses into the wilderness where he encamped at the Mount of God. Mount Hor. Okay? All right. And uh, Exodus 24, 13. Exodus 24, 13. Giving you some stuff to chew on, aren't we, huh? Exodus 24, 13. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the Mount of God. All right? And 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. We're looking at Mount of God, obviously. 1 Kings 19, verse 8. Okay? 1 Kings 19, verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. So was Satan kicked out, you know, we'll go back down to Ezekiel 28. Satan was cursed in the Garden of Eden. Since thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Okay? Satan was that serpent. Now, in Ezekiel 28, okay, verses 14 on to verse 16 again, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Is that a reference onto Mount Horeb? I don't know. But we know what Satan was cursed in Genesis 3, and that Satan clearly was aware of who was what. Satan knew that Eve was the uh, weaker vessel. I don't think at all he had to wait to see which one was which, because God decreed, let us make man in our image. Okay? It is not good that man should be alone. He knew that ahead of time. So, somewhere in there, somewhere, somewhere in the creation, obviously, angels came into play. Now, like I said, got to be careful about when did angels come into play. We, like I said, we're seeing a lot of evidence that strongly suggests that angels came perhaps after man because of Hebrews chapter 1. Okay? I'm not totally convinced of that yet, but the evidence is pretty compelling. The evidence is pretty compelling. Okay? All right? I do not think it would be heresy for you to hold to the notion, well, I think the angels came after man. I also don't... Which one is which? I don't really know. Hey, hey! I confess that to you. I don't know. All right? I don't know. And I, like that for a while, uh, the Job, about Job, I had believed that Job was before the flood. Upon examining the scriptures daily and brethren helping me, you know, heaven's like, well, what about this? What? Uh, eventually, I came, and I even, the, 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 the Job videos. I even admitted it. Okay, the Job videos. It's like, I changed my, my stance. 
I used to believe that Job happened before the flood. I don't believe it. I have scriptural evidence. The same thing here with the thing about the angels, okay? Got to be careful, though, because if you get too enwrapped in that, it can distract you. Okay? Okay, but let's read uh, Ezekiel 28 to finish this up. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Okay? It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. <laughs> so, <laughs> how about that one, huh, brother? So, to answer the original question, yeah, I gave you a little something to chew on there, huh, brother and sister? I believe that Satan, of course, knew ahead of time that which one was which. Because as it is written here in the scripture, Genesis 2, and see, Satan obviously had known what God had said. Okay, obviously. So that shows us that Satan, Satan knew that Eve was created for Adam, not Adam for Eve. He knew that going ahead. I believe that Satan, because um, uh, where, where does it say that? Um, verse 18. Okay? Verse 17 and 18. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And that's what the brother corrected me on on the one video. And thank you, brother. Okay? And I knew, I know that. I was just, my mouth was going quicker than my brain. Okay? No excuse. And the Lord God said, Yea, hath God said. See, Satan knew ahead of time. Satan knew ahead of time. Yes, he did. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Meaning that the weaker vessel. So, in comparing in Scripture and looking at what we have looked at, Satan knew ahead, knew from the get-go, that Eve, <laughs> verse 23, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man, and man was created in the image of God. Satan knew ahead of time. Okay? So, uh, and yeah, I, I realized, gave you something to chew on. That's good. That's good. And like I said, uh, I learned, uh, it took me a while uh, through uh, searching of scripture uh, to come to the truth, the fact that Job was post-flood. Okay? I believe for a while that uh, Job was pre-flood. I was wrong. It's the thing about angels. I do believe that angels were before man. I do. Okay? The thing about mountains. Okay, I believe that there were mountains and little hills before the flood. Okay, I don't believe Mount Everest was there. Okay, but was Mount Horeb before, after the flood? I don't know. We do know that the flood changed everything. The flood was what gave us Grand Canyon. Flood changed the atmosphere. I don't believe uh, Fiji and stuff like that was there. Okay, I don't. All right, these are things that you, saint, can search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. But as far as, dear brother, I know that you got a whole lot more than you were. Praise the Lord. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is this? Okay, anyway. Um, 
Good morning, Brad. Uh, something interesting came to mind about Adam and Eve. Do you think that Satan took the time to watch and study them to figure out that Eve was the weaker one? No, I don't believe so. Or did he just automatically know she was? He automatically knew because he said, Yea, hath God said. Okay, so that is how I will answer that question, brother, and giving you guys even more to muse upon. So thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you, brethren. Thank you, brother, for the very good question. Be lots of videos for you in the description box for you to come consider and ponder things, okay? Um, thank you, brother. Very good. Um, thank you, Father in heaven, okay? So I'm going to get this uploaded. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take three and a half hours as the last one did. So please keep your servant in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And uh, thank you. And we will see you in the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.